Until very recently, it was believed that we only had one species of frog in the UK, a common frog. Pool frogs first came to our notice, really, in the 1980s. And there was no reason to believe either that they were native or that they were going extinct. We started looking into it more carefully at the end of the 1990s, which was by then too late. Uh, we had no idea that they were disappearing so quickly, and disappear they did. They're a very water-loving species. They're out during the day. I love the call and I love the fact that they make quite a racket. I think they're, they're one of the prettiest frogs, although I'm probably a little bit biased. The pool frog is one of a group of frogs called water frogs, or sometimes green frogs which is a genetically complex set of animals that occur across Europe and indeed Asia as well. The population that we knew about was at this place called Thompson Common near Setford in Norfolk. There was a very commonly held view that the pool frog population was in fact a different species. They believed it to be the edible frog and were convinced it was introduced. And they were actually looking at the his historic introductions that have been documented even into the 1800s of animals being brought in, particularly from France, and introduced into the area. The accounts of people bringing them across from Belgium in baskets full of waterweed and frogs and just turning them out, because for some reason Victorians like to do that kind of thing. People just assumed that the frogs were a bit of a curiosity, it might be an interesting thing to go and see, but they were an introduced species, so they were of no conservation interest, so nobody was really paying a lot of attention to them. Well, it stemmed from one chap, basically, a chap called Charles Snell, who thought, for no special reason, that this particular colony looked different from the known introductions. And so he got people interested enough. A group was set up to investigate this in various ways. I think it's fair to say that most of us thought they'd turn out to be just one of the introductions. The second we started getting more interested in them, we really realised at that time they declined quite severely. So my role was looking at sort of the genetic basis of arguing that this has been a native species in the past. So first of all, we needed samples. And at this point, there was only one surviving member of what we considered possibly a native population. So we looked at museum specimens. We found that the known introduced populations in the UK were most closely related to French and Dutch populations, which is what we expect. Really curiously, what we hypothesised was a native UK population was actually most closely related to Scandinavian populations. The last land bridge of the UK with the continent was actually from sort of the Norfolk area over to Denmark. Another line of inquiry, which is slightly more bizarre, is listening to the calls of the species. The analysis of bioacoustics very much followed the same pattern that we saw with the genetics. I got involved because I was doing my PhD in subfossil bones of amphibians and reptiles at the time. So I studied many thousands, tens of thousands of bones from archaeological sites. Saxon period, so about a thousand to 1500 years ago, I found two pool frog bones. And they were both about a thousand years old or thereabouts. Bingo, we, we found evidence of the pool frog before Victorian times. We found that the pool frog has been here at least a thousand years. And together with all the other evidence, it all pointed to them being a native species. Suddenly they go from something that's just a curiosity to something that's a conservation priority. And although the research was conclusive, it came in a little bit too late because by then the frogs had dwindled to extinction. So what we had to do then was decide what we were going to do about that. And one of the main things then was to look at the idea of reintroducing them and to use the most closely related animals, particularly those from Sweden. The original site 
where they went extinct was by then in such a bad state. So we, we found a site and that needed quite a lot of habitat management as well to get it ready. So with reintroductions there's always a lot of paperwork I guess you could call it. So you've got to analyse the risks, make sure you are putting back something native, make sure you're not bringing any diseases over. Um, there's a lot of discussion about how it might impact the habitat and the biodiversity that's already at the place you're um, reintroducing it to. So it's a very well thought out process before anything physical with the animals even really begins to happen. So several of us flying to Sweden, bringing back boxes of frogs, frog spawn and um, or tadpoles as well. It was, it was great. I was so happy to have the opportunity to go out and actually see the pool frogs in their natural habitat as well in Sweden. Um, it was really, really wonderful. It started in 2005 that we began bringing them back to a site in Norfolk that is secret at the moment. And then in 2015, they then were moved to Thompson Common, so we now have two populations. Hopefully, with everything going well, they will be more widespread in the future. Rather pleasingly, uh, last year, 2020, we found that the frogs moved from the release site back to where they were last seen in the very same ponds that Charles Snell saw them in the 1990s. They're doing really well there, they've exceeded our expectations. It just challenges conventional wisdom. You know, we've only got 12 amphibian and reptile species in the British Isles, but we've got a very long history of natural history interest in this country, so it's pretty well trodden ground. So the idea that we can have overlooked a vertebrate species as native is, is pretty incredible, really. I think they're really cute. When the males are calling together, they start bundling together and have a little bit of a fight for the territory, and that's quite fun to watch. I think the pool frog is particularly exciting. The idea of bringing together very disparate sorts of information to try to prove an animal that's gone extinct has been native is probably fairly unique. Bringing the pool frog back has been one of the things I've been really pleased to see throughout my career. And certainly the pool frog's a lovely little animal and very exciting addition to our amphibian fauna.